guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christian. Welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back to another Bible study. And today, Bible study will be diving into John chapter 12, verses 37 to 50. To begin, we're going to start off with a prayer by me, then get straight into the word. If you guys can, can you bow your head and close your eyes? Father God, we thank you for this day that you've made. I will rejoice and begin it, God. I pray it's now with brothers that we're about to get into the time of your word, God. I pray that your hands will bless and come to work, God. I pray that we'll be able to sharpen each other, God. Iron, sharpen, iron, God. In Jesus' name, holy name, amen. 37. But despite all the miraculous signs Jesus had done, most of the people still did not believe in him. This is exactly what Isaiah the prophet had predicted. Lord, who has believe our word to whom has the lord revealed his powerful arm but the people couldn't believe for isaiah also said the lord has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts so that their eyes cannot see and their heart cannot understand and they cannot turn to me and i and have me healed them isaiah was referring to jesus when he said this because he saw the future and spoke of the Messiah glorious glory. You get what you read? Still trying to process it. Um, pretty much it's going back to what so you go back to the book of Isaiah. Mm -hmm. Isaiah gives a prophecy about what's gonna happen when Jesus comes, that he's gonna do these miracles and perform signs and wonders, and there's still gonna be people who don't believe in him. Even with him doing what he did, raising Lazarus from the dead or um, making the blind see, making the dumb talk, and making the cripple walk, right? They're still not going to believe. And he says that this is the part that I'm tripped up on. This is that he has blinded their eyes and has hardened their hearts that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted and I should heal them. So. Yeah, they, it's, Damn it sounds shit. like, yeah, it's almost like uh, you ever you remember what I don't know if you remember the, the intricacies of Exodus, but remember how Moses had to keep going back to Pharaoh, and he was like his heart was hardened, like Pharaoh would not listen and hear the message that Moses was telling him until like the very last plague, and it was a reason for that. The reason was for the children of Israel to see the glory of God and to see his, his mighty hand, powerful hand, how he brought them up out of Egypt so that they would never forget what happened. And it was also for Egypt, the Egyptians and all the nations to see that the God that the Jewish people served was a powerful God. He was the God of all gods. Um, and so it says here at the last court sentence or piece of verse 40, it says, I should heal them. Right, it says they're going to be converted, and they sh I should heal them. So, although they were their hearts were hardened, ultimately, Jesus would provide a way for them to receive him. Um, and then, if you see, uh, if you go down to the forty-two, it says, nevertheless, among the chief rulers, many believed on Jesus, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess that they their their belief in him, unless they should be put out of the synagogue. So they, they're concerned about their status in the world and what other people would think of them if they confess Jesus Christ. Um, and so instead of saying, yeah, I believe in Jesus, they just kept their tongue because they didn't want to lose their powerful positions in the world. Yeah, I've, I've always tripped up on on especially in to this when it said god hardened uh, pharaoh's hearts or the egyptians hearts and this this little uh, note in my bible um it said god hardened their hearts um does that mean god intentionally prevented the these people from believing in him no he simply confirmed their own choices they already made the choice um, to the point that their heart was so far from god that no matter what happened, they simply wouldn't believe. This is what my Bible is saying. He says, after a lifetime of resisting God, they have become so set in their ways, they wouldn't even try to understand Jesus' message. Right? So no matter how you're knocking on the window, they're not, they're not opening. They're just so set in their ways. Yeah. 
46. How many people did believe in him? However, including some of the Jewish leaders, but they wouldn't admit it for the fear that the Pharisee would exile from them, exile them from the synagogue. For they loved human praise more than the praise from God. But they love human praise more than the praise from God. You think about that? That's a key. Yeah, I repeat that because that's a key scripture. Versus that's what we're trying to tell you, brother. Make sure when you go, you become famous, you don't forget about who made you that way. <laughs> you love you, you, you focusing on the praise of man and how they glorify you versus doing what it takes to get the glory, the glorification and praise from God. These people were worrying about their power on earth. Things with your power on earth can easily be taken away. Easily. Like that. Um, okay. Verse 44. Jesus shouted to the crowd, If you trust me, you are trusting not only in me, but also God who sent me. For when you see me, you are seeing the one who sent me. What do you think that means? Who is he referring to? For when you see me, you are seeing that. You're talking about 45, right? Yeah, you said 44 and 45. Okay. Yeah. If you trust in me, you're not only trusting me, but you're trusting me. Not just in me. Who sent him? God. That's what he's saying. So the, the Jews only believed in God. They didn't believe in the Son of God. So he's saying, if you believe in me, you too also believe in the one who sent me. Because I came from him. And if you believe in him, you got to believe in me too. When you see Ezra preach, you're seeing the one who sent Ezra to preach. Come on, man. Come on. That's it. Simple. That's it. You see the difference, Jay? He wanted to preach. Hey, I don't want to do it. <laughs> I don't want to do it. <laughs> He eager to do it. I'm like, yeah, nah, I'm going to be like, you know what I love it. I love preaching. I love it. My love and, and the come, my love and passion for it is out of this world. Like, I love it. Interesting. I always find people interested in that acts for the calling. I, I, I never asked for it. I never asked for this. Like, no, seriously. I read this book, bro. Um, that I bought like three days ago, and he was saying he never asked to be a pastor. You know, the life just found him per se. And so to hear you say you love preaching and the, like you want to do it, as long as God is calling you, man, that that's what's most important. As long as you're doing the will of God, then go forth, man. I, I mean, him just ministering the word of God, that you don't need to be ordained to do that. That's that's our mandate, to go out and share the gospel. It, it's just, I think the pastoral position is something that I believe God needs to give you. That's a gift to the church, those type of ministries. Um, that's a whole nother level. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're all called to share, share the word, but not necessarily in the form of preaching, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? So... I mean, to, to hear him say that, you know what I mean? Like, like preaching ain't, ain't easy, bro. Like, I preach tomorrow. It's, it's, no it's matter not, how many times I've done it, you know? Yeah. It's not sometimes you get you get stuck up with your ways and then you try to figure yourself out. But I look at it just like anything in life. It's always going to be a challenge there, but you can overcome anything through Christ. And not only you can overcome anything through Christ, when you once you put your mind to it too, because everybody know God can do his part, but if you don't do your part, it's not going to work. God can give you the gift to use your voice. He can give you the gift of preaching, give you the gift of motivation of speaking, but if you don't use it, it's worthless. This, I mean, not really. Keep that, keep that energy for a lifetime, my brother. Keep that energy. It's useless. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Uh, you you, you feeding me right now. You, yeah, yeah, you. 
she feeding me right now, bro. <laughs> I know uh, for, if I get to preach the word, I'm going to do it. Like last just, night. Don't don't get ahead of yourself. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna get ahead of myself. But 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 for example, like last night, Gio, I wasn't even planning to do a lot, but once once the lesson was just going along, it was just coming to my your boy. Look at the braids, it was just different. Like <laughs> Change the name. I, so I, I did, so we, we read Esther, who was like, fo- the topic was to focus on the goodness of God, but using not so familiar stories in the Bible. So we read the whole Esther yesterday. At the end of the Esther, I was like, yo, I ain't got anything to say. Oh, the glory of the boy, the voice came out. Oh, because oh, ah, when God set for man, I was like, who is this? <laughs> Yo, all the other youth in the chat, oh, God, Pastor Ezra. I was like, yeah, this dude. I was like, he better sit down. Yeah, good. As refreshing, though, to, to see and hear you say that, man, because, you know, we pray for more young people to be, to be like you, to aspire to grow and to serve and to use their gift. So keep on, man. Just stay, stay behind God. Stay behind God. Let him lead me. And I hope I inspire you to do that. that I, I pray for that. I want to I wanna inspire them. I, I, I don't want to be the only one doing something. I don't, don't want to be the only one using their talent. I don't want to be the only one getting opportunities. I, I don't want to be the only one known for using their gifts. Yeah, I just I don't. This is this is one position I just don't want to be in by myself. No, I want to have other people with nah, me. You won't be anybody, sure. No, I won't. Nah, but I'm just saying, like since positions, I have no problem. Just me, leave it alone. But this position, I want to have my youth, my my generation with me. So that's something you pray for, bro. I pray for it. and the three videos I'm working on right now that's going to engage with that. Uh, I'm I'm a hope and pray that the message and purpose behind those videos will be able to be fulfilling and um inspire the youth. All right, we'll do the last four verse forty six. I have come as a light to shine in the dark world, so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark. I will not judge those who hear me, but do not obey. For I have come to save the world and not to judge. But all who reject me and my message will be judged on the day of judgment by the truth I have spoken. I do not speak on my own authority. The Father who sent me has commanded me what to say, has commanded me what to say and how to say it. And I know his commands lead me to eternal life. So I say whatever the Father tells me to say. Jesus is saying that there's still time. It says, if any man hear my words and they don't believe, I'm not judging them right now. I didn't come to judge. I came to save the world. I came to be the ultimate sacrifice. There's no longer any killing of animals for the replacement of your sins. Instead, I've come to do that, the ultimate sacrifice, so that you don't have to be judged should you decide to receive me and accept my words. But if you don't, by the time I come back, there then is when you'll be judged. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, John three seventeen. Or Jesus said he came not to condemn the world, right? But that the world through him might be saved. It was exactly as, as Gio said, um, saying decide which side you will be on, right? Because your consequence of your decision lasts forever. So make your choice. Uh, it reminds me of, of what Joshua said. Um, so that as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. So which which side are you going to be on? Here's another opportunity um, for you to believe. 
right? You've seen the miracles, you've seen the signs and the wonders. How you will you now respond? I think he continues to uh, debunk the belief that he only came for the Jews. Um, he also came for the Gentiles. He came for every one of us, right? No matter our skin color, no matter our background, he came for every single one of us. <clears throat> and Jesus continued to preach this even when they got him. That's what amazed me. Say that again, I'm sorry. So Jesus continued to preach that even when they captured him. That's what amazed me. I know we didn't get to that part yet, but that really amazed me. Even when he would, even when they got him, he continued to preach it. And that's how you know he, 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 he really believed, believed and have full faith in everything that God instilled in him. Especially like in a moment like that, it will be too focused on the consequences that's the consequences that's going to happen. But instead, he's focused on what he's already been focused on for the longest. So that really that that amazed me. This commitment, man. This commitment to the assignment from the Father. Right? That same commitment. It, it, essentially, whatever Jesus did, um, he expects us to match that in a sense. Right? So that, that way he was committed to the end, committed to the assignment. Um, in the beginning, when we talked about um, anyone who wants to follow me or be my disciple will follow me. Uh, he expects that, that same level of commitment. Right, that we would follow him, um, even as you said, Ezra, knowing what he is about to go through and what was about to happen. Think about Esther last night. She just put her life on the line. She's like, "If I die, I die." Those are her words, but she knew the reason why she was dying, why she was going out there to risk it. It was bigger than her. It was for her to save her people. And that's exactly what Jesus is doing to save his people. That is amazing. And that's, that's crazy because she did it with the 50 50 chance. He did it knowing he was going to die, knowing that everybody's not going to believe on him, but he still did it anyway, just to give those an opportunity. That's a word, man. It's kind of. <laughs> Yeah, all of that. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. You good? Yeah. But don't you, don't you like when you like hear the Bible, you just get that more like that, that man is something else. But like in a really good way. Yeah, man. It's just I remember at one point I would say, I wish I didn't have to go to work. So I could just study the Bible all day. I <laughs> I wish I didn't have to do nothing. I just want to study all day. And I was just like, like man, that's, that's, that's pretty deep. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> but that's because I was just in, like, when I first started learning about Jesus, like, I'd say that I'm not, that's not, I'm not, but I, I was like infatuated with the whole, like, I want more. And not only did I want more, but instantaneously the desire for me to share what I was receiving from Christ with others, just it came over me. Like it just hit me like a big wave. Like, I, oh, now I got to tell you about Jesus. Come, come, come. I was almost like the woman at the well. Like, no, no, come on. Y'all got to change that. Nah, we can't do that no more. We can't go over there. We can't be at that place. We can't move this way. Come with me. Come with me. And that, that, that's, that was my experience when I first got converted, um, when I first accepted Christ. And it's just like now it's just like not to say that I I lost that love, that focus is definitely still there. Everywhere I go, I try to tell Christ. Um, you know, it's just but like you said, like you could delve into this Bible twenty four seven, read the same thing seventeen times, and I promise you, Holy Spirit will just hit you with something different every time. Yeah. Okay, guys, now I'm going to get into the time of prayer. If you guys can, please bow your head and close your eyes. Father God, we thank you for this day that you've made. I rejoice in the God. I pray today that we were able to come together, brother, to be able to discuss your word, God. I pray that iron was able to sharpen iron, God. We pray that we were able to use 
the word in our lives each and every single day, God. We pray that we're going to continue to stay connected to the source, God. In Jesus' in your holy name, amen. Thank you guys so much for coming back each and every single week to be able to watch this video. I love you guys so much. If you haven't liked the video already, hit the thumbs up. If you're new, subscribe. Also, turn on your post notification. And this is Motivation for Young Christians. I'm out. Peace.